Welcome, everybody. My name is Semyon Horvat. I'm an assistant professor of machine learning at the Mohammed bin Zayed University of Artificial Intelligence. And today, I will present our work titled Optimal Client Sampling for Federated Learning. It was recently accepted to the Transaction Machine Learning Research Journal. This is a joint work with my wonderful collaborators, Wenlin Chen, who is a PhD student at Cambridge University, and Peter Iktari, who is a professor at KAUST. Let me first walk you through the outline of my presentation. I will start with an introduction about federated learning. Then I'll introduce our proposed important sampling for federated learning. And I also showcase some of our experiments, after which I conclude my talk with future plans. Okay, so let me start with the introduction. Traditionally, in machine learning, we implemented intelligence by collecting all the data in the one centralized location. We moved from local solutions to cloud-based solutions as much of machine learning success rely on large-scale training infrastructures and there was a was of training data stored in one centralized location. But there is a downside of decentralized setup. Uh, that is, the data comes from users and this collection can hurt user experience mostly due to privacy implications. Uh, to protect users' data, privacy were already enforced by both government entities and by private sector companies like Apple. Uh, these regulations will eventually lead to limited availability of data. So now the question is, what should we do to actually still use decentralized data while maintaining users' privacy? And this is where federated, <coughs> federated learning comes into play. So federated learning is defined as machine learning settings where we have multiple parties that want to collaborate in, sol in order to solve machine learning problem. And this co collaboration is coordinated by a central server or orchestrator. The core idea of federated learning is a decentralized learning where the user's data is never sent to the server, actually never transferred or even exchanged. Instead, it is kept locally and the learning objective is meant to be achieved using focus updates intended for immediate aggregation to avoid any privacy leaks. So at the end of the day, this, uh, this gives us a hope to train on large data set while keeping a uh, data private. Uh, in addition to that, there's an increasing demand to obey uh, data locality paradigm, which means to process data uh, where they were collected. And also there are several recent studies that um, has shown that federated learning can be a greener technology comparing to cloud-based training. And regarding the application, uh, FL has been already used in several commercial applications uh, such as Apple hey, <laughs> Apple, hey Siri and QuickType and Google's Hey Google and Gboard. And although uh, federated learning is still a relatively new concept and that there is definitely more to come in the future. So particularly it can be very useful in application areas where data privacy is the priority uh, such as medical banking or uh, medical or banking applications. Uh, now I'll try to give you a high level overview of federated training loop, which consists of four uh, main steps as described in the first FL paper by McMahon and co-authors. Firstly, so the server uh, sends a global model to all available devices. Uh, these devices then perform local training based on their local <clears throat> data. And then the model update is communicated back to the server which aggregates them and lastly updates the global model to be distributed in the next communication round. Uh, unfortunately, as such, federated learning comes with many specific challenges. And one of them is communication being expensive in federated learning. And this is due to two main reasons. So firstly, this is because uh, wireless links and other end user internet connections are much slower than data center links. And it should be also noted that even for data centers, communication is already a bottleneck. Uh, secondly, this is due to the limited capacity of the aggregating master. And what we see is that especially the cost of communicating updates is a key bottleneck. So there are several ways uh, to fix this problem. So standard approach is to reduce communication uh, by reducing the size of uh, communicated updates. This is usually in the literature referred to as communication compression. Uh, then another very popular approach in federated learning is to give more work to each client by allowing them to run multiple local updates 
before actually communicating back to the master. And then the last standard approach is to uh, do important sampling for related learning, which means to smart limit number of devices to communicate back to the master. So I would like to stress here that these three approaches, they are all in some sense orthogonal and can be combined for improved overall effect. And in this talk and in our work, we focus on important sampling. All right. So let me just give you now intuition about uh, our important sampling and actually why important sampling is hard to do for uh, cross device for learning. So where the devices are actually false. So this is because we do not have any identifiers or states, and this is by construction. And therefore, master cannot actually identify the devices that are available at the current training. And on top of that, the master only sees the aggregated update. So we require, uh, on top of statelessness of the client, we also require that the master has access only to some average. So we enforce that the updates are securely aggregated. So uh, it seems that doing important sampling might be in a fairly learning setting almost impossible. Uh, but there's actually a way to do it. And this is what we show in our work. And let me present our proposed solution. So the first two steps are identical to the standard round of Fairlight training. But there is a difference in the third step where instead of sending updates, uh, client, uh, clients only compute the norm of their update which is communicated with the master, which aggregates these norms and sends the aggregated value back to the client. Uh, next, then each client participates with probability, which is determined by local norm and the value provided uh, <clears throat> by the master. And then those selected devices, they send their updates which are aggregated by master. And finally, the global model is updated. Uh, so what you can note here is that we introduce four extra steps uh, compared to the standard federated training, where the goal of this procedure is to filter important updates cheaply. All right, so let me now summarize the contributions of our work. So we propose a novel adaptive partial participation strategy for reducing communication in federated learning. Uh, what we show in the paper is that our adaptive client sampling procedure is optimal. This is in the sense that it minimizes the variance of the master update. Uh, in addition to that, uh, to the best of my knowledge, this so our sampling procedure is the only known and therefore the only applicable important sampling strategy for federated learning that is compatible with standard secure aggregation and support stateless clients. And these are the essential blocks, building blocks of cross device federated learning. Uh, in the paper, we also show theoretically that our approach yields faster convergence for both distributed SGD and very popular federated averaging in both convex and non-convex setting. Uh, also, what you, you can think is that based on the sampling strategy, strategy based on the importance, it might be tempting to assume that the opt-in solution that we obtain running our sampling strategy uh, might exhibit some fairness issues. For instance, it weights some clients more than the others, but this is actually not the case because of our probabilistic partic uh, participation strategy. And this is something that I'll show you in the next slide. All right, so now let me give you an intuition about how uh, we constructed our sampling procedure. <clears throat> so here, the display optimization problem plays a crucial role for our method. So we are looking for such sampling uh, that minimizes the following term and let us now analyze it. So we have N clients that participate in the current communication round with their updates UIs. So we define PIs to be probabilities that using the given sampling calligraphic S, uh, the client I is choosing to communicate back to the server. So on the right-hand side, uh, 
of our minimization problem, we have the full update from all of the clients. While on the left-hand side, this is a sample update constructed by only using a subset of the client and the subset is defined by the sets S. Note here that the sampled update is an unbiased estimator of the full update as for its expectation. Uh, this PI simple cancels out and you get the true update. Uh, this means that in average, we always send the correct update and therefore we do not actually change the original objective as I previously mentioned. So next, let me focus on this constraint here on the right and which they say that we enforce an upper bound on the expected number of clients that communicated back to the master. And this is to ensure a good communication complexity while minimizing the expected distance between the sample and full update. In the paper, we provide a tight upper bound to this problem that has a close form solution for the optimal sampling. And it only requires all clients to share norm of their updates, which is only one float per client of an extra communication. And this all, as we show, it can be computed only using secure aggregation. Let me now move to the experiments and, and, and showcase some of our experiments. Uh, first, I'll introduce our experimental setup. So we evaluated our sampling on two datasets. This is a federated extended version of this dataset with convolutional neural network, where each client corresponds to one person's handwriting. And then we also have Shakespeare dataset uh, with the LSTM network, where each client is a character from a Shakespeare book. To model client availability, we, in each round, we sample n clients and run uh, at random in each round. And we also use something that we call master capacity that we denote by M. Uh, the baselines that we compare to is, uh, these kind of two natural baselines that arise here, is one is to sample M clients uniformly from all available clients and full participation where all and available clients participate. As an optimizer, we use a uh, very popular federated averaging. All right, so, so for the uh, first experiment, we compare all methods in terms of number of communication rounds. So what you can see here that the performance of our proposed optimal sampling here displayed in the red is in between full, which is green, and uniform partial participation, which here in the blue. Uh, what you can note here is that for both data sets, the optimal sampling strategy performs only marginally worse than full participation. And also uh, the uniform sampling strategy performs significantly worse. And this indicates that the careful choice of sampling probabilities can go really a long way towards closing the gap between the naive a uniform sampling and full participation. And actually full participation here is an upper bound on the performance of any sampling method. Uh, more importantly, and this is what's the main motivation of this work, our optimal strategy is significantly better when uh, we compare actually the bits communicates <clears throat> Uh, bits communicated from clients to the master. And what you can note here is actually that the x-axis is log scaled. Uh, for the future work, we are interested uh, in combining our method uh, with communication compression, which we believe to be a straightforward extension. And secondly, uh, in the setting where the communication latency is high, it becomes clear that our sampling method may not be effective in reducing the real communication time. And therefore, we are actually interested in extending our sampling to uh, account for the local constraints uh, for each client, such as uh, computational speed, network bandwidth, or communication latency. All right, so with this, I would like to conclude my presentation and thank you for your attention.